Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurity and Miniatures. Today we are going to go through our backlog of antimatter models from Antimatter's Deep Wars game. So these were things that came with the Blood Reef Kickstarter, I believe, or was originally created. Well, I shouldn't say that. The Dire Fish Lizard originated from prior to that, but you can see he's got the long tarot card instead of the old-fashioned regular trading card sized stack card here but i wanted to bring these models out because these are actually their cast resin models and while you may have noticed uh, antimatter is running a campaign currently for mostly 3d stl files but they are going to be offering up casted resin models as well so i wanted to show off some of these resin models in case you're curious if you've never dealt with any of their materials or you're just generally interested in seeing big nasty sea monsters because that's what we got today so we have the dire fish lizard the silver death and the sea serpent and you can see here grabbing all the models well okay i lied we're gonna start with the dire fish lizard which looks suspiciously like something from the ichthyosaur family if i am correct in my marine biology one thing that is worth mentioning is just about every single model in the Antimatters catalog is they always have these nice scenic base toppers. So you can see here, you do sometimes need to flatten it out and cut it off a bit, but you can see like so. Here is the actual fishy fish. We'll need a little bit of cleanup here and possibly some green stuff. This is one of their older models, for whatever that means. I'm curious. It, did it say who sculpted it? No. A lot of times on the newer kits, when you do buy them in retail, they usually have you know a sticker with both the name of the model and the sculptor. And I'm sure I can find that information online if I wasn't so lazy. You can see here where his flippers are going to attach. So not too complex of model. Let's see. And as I was saying, I was almost correct. Sometimes the models have metal bits like a lot of other companies like privateer so you can see here this is actually what he's going to use to attach to the base except i don't know where his actual contact point is i don't know so, so one set of fins and another set of fins which are much smaller and he sits on a 50 millimeter base i will attempt to figure out just how he's going to attach to that Next up, let's take a look at the Sea Serpent. In those packages that you guys saw, this is usually how they send models when you order a batch or from a Kickstarter. Again, we have a nice resin base topper. Very evocative of the ocean floor and the shadow sea. 50 millimeter base. And our sea serpent friend is just about entirely one piece. He's a little bit skinnier than I was expecting, but the detail is quite nice. I want to say he was actually a 3D rendered model. I could be wrong, and it wouldn't be the first time. And then you have the actual head here. Again, nice details. Along with the lower jaw. And the little fins that are gonna pop up on the sides of his head as well. I'm assuming there's, yeah, there's a little slot there for those. Okay. And last but not least, we have the Silver Death, which I cannot remember the name of, and my son has disappeared, who most likely knows what it's supposed to be named after, and I will nag him about that later on. Let's see if I can get that, there we go. Staple in the way. Once more, 50 millimeter base, so these are some big fishies. Nice scenic base that our fishy friend is going to attach to. I'm not 100% sure where on that base. I'm assuming this little plug right here. Like so, perhaps? I don't know, I'll figure that out. You know, looking online would probably be a good idea. It looks like I'm gonna have to be really careful getting that out. Maybe not, because that's the actual face. You got the underbell under neath part of the jaw, the inner jaw, inside of the jaw. 
Eventually, I'll get those words out of my mouth. Uh, and then we have his fins as well. So nothing too complex in terms of things to build, but it will be a little bit of a fun project to get this all put together. So I'm gonna grab some clippers, some super glue, and a knife, and we are going to slice and dice our way into having some nice big fishy friends. Bear with me for just a moment. So we've got our aquatic friends all finished up here. We'll go very carefully through them one by one. Let me get this zoomed in a little bit if we can. There we go. We'll start off with our friend the sea serpent since he's in the middle. We'll talk a little bit about him. Did need a little bit of gap filling which we're going to get to. Construction was pretty simple. The hole for his head did need to be cleaned up a little bit. Not a big deal though. Uh, like I said, there's a little bit of a gap. Where are you? Somewhere. My goodness, where did it go? <laughs> like, I know I didn't do a good job. Oh, there we go. Right here. So I just stuck some glue in there. We're going to go ahead and put some green stuff in later on prior to getting him all painted up. I've got a kid waving a phone at me here. Take it. Okay. Um... There is a little plug here in his base that he is just going to kind of slip and slide his way onto. Pretty much like so. Really good sense of movement with him. You can see he's kind of undulating through the water there. I like that. I'm assuming he's going to swim like an eel based on his body shape. Good size. I'll show you how big they are in just a little bit. But let's take a look at the other models. Here we have the Silver Death. Now, this guy... If I built him correctly, which is completely up to debate, is going to be a little bit of a challenge to get on his base. You can see if I build it correctly, like I said, it looks like he's actually kind of swimming and turning a bit on the base. My son was saying something about being related to a viper fish. I know it starts with a X, Zilcanthia or something like that. I'll try to find out and put that in the description down below if somebody doesn't jump on my back first. My kid wasn't exactly in the best of moves to be cooperative in helping me name what he was actually based on, but things went together pretty smoothly. There's a little bit of a gap there, but if you have any experience building resin models, especially gaming size ones, that shouldn't be too bad. You can see he just kind of plugs in there, sits on pretty nicely actually. And finally, we have the one that is going to be the most uncooperative currently because I don't see any kind of actual plug. And you did notice when I first popped him out of the box, there was a bit of a mess down here. And I wonder if the piece that was actually supposed to plug into that little hole actually got cut off. Not a big deal in terms of actually finishing him up. I'm just going to finish drilling a hole in there, stick like a paper clip or a brass rod and plunk him on down. So I don't have any blue tack at the moment, but I know you guys have mentioned it that I probably should get some. And I absolutely agree. We'll just plop him on the base as a perch for now. And if you're curious how big these models are, yes, they're sitting on 50 millimeter bases. They're not the biggest. Let's get it zoomed out a bit. Our token marine friend there. But as a treat, I did grab a couple of painted Deep Wars models. He isn't a Deep Wars model. He is part of Shadow Sea. He's part of the Draconid Legion, who actually was when they were still with, uh, what was it, Cavalcade or Dragon Blood Miniatures? This dude actually is a Deep Wars model. This is a Draconid Shaman. 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 Shamalan. Shamalama Ding Dong. Whatever. Anyway, you can see here, he's kind of a big model, though. Let's see if we can have some humans. I do have a whole painted Fortune Hunter starter set. Sadly, they're not all handy at the moment, but I didn't know where these two were. Everybody's tucked in between various boxes and you can see our friends behind here are definitely going to give them a run for the money they're going to be some dangerous sized adversaries not as big as some of the newer models from the line especially when you get into stuff like the elder sea dragon and the fun stuff like the nautiloids and some of the ancients of Ottawan machinery and I'll show those off in another video so you guys can get an idea because I know I have quite a few of them laying around and if you really want to have some fun Hanging out with the Dark Mariners. Well, you're not a Dark Mariner, but 
there's a very loud motorcycle driving by. I'm going to wait for them to be quiet. These were painted eons ago, if you're curious. And all these are actually metal models. And these two especially are just big, solid chunks of metal. They're really heavy. And I don't know how many times I've had to reseal them because they just take so many scratches. They're just rough and big and tough models. And they're really nice looking. Despite my poor paint job that I did a million years ago, I think I kind of tried following uh, Eric from Antimatters various paints and washes schemes on them and I think they turned out okay considering their age. These are some of the very first models I actually tried painting when I first got back into tabletop gaming about uh, what 2012 2013 god at least five or so years ago now frightening anyway so this is just a quick sampler of some of the bigger adversarial wild animals you might find in a deep wars game and hopefully just to take a look at the resin and see how complex it is it wasn't too bad and they really are nice kits and they scale pretty well with the actual models i'll show off some of the bigger pieces in another video hopefully soon and if you're interested i'll leave a link down below for the kickstarter that they are currently running for their 3D files along with a link to the actual website. So hopefully you guys have found that helpful. Hopefully if this has piqued your interest, you'll check that out and find out what kinds of animals some of the more uh, natural ones are based on because I can always use the help in identifying that. And hopefully we'll see you back here again soon. This has been High Lord Tamberling with Obscurities and Miniatures and thanks for watching and we'll see you all later. Bye-bye.